Hello everyone, my name is of course the Mantis Dude 101. Today I'm going to be doing a showcase on all of my praying mantis and some other pets enclosures. Okay, so let's start off with um, my largest orchid mantis. Um, her name's Orca. She is my favourite. Sorry about the um, lighting. She's my favourite um, praying mantis. She's she's quite nice. I've got just a regular orchid. This is a Exoterra small or mini, I believe. Um, yeah, she just had. I just use this basic um, orchid. They like to climb on it. They can shed from it. She has like some, I think, aluminum, aluminium, whatever you want to call it, mesh on top of that. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to my hermit crabs. I used to have one hermit crab, then I found out he needed two, so I picked up another one. There's one right there. Um, just kind of right there. Another one's, um, the other one's just dug underground. I've got a video of both of them. He's not shedding, he's just doing that because he's hiding, believe me. Okay, next enclosure. Oh yeah, and I put these, um, on top to hold in more humidity so that when I spray them, it doesn't all go out. I need to spray them. There we go. They need humidity in the air to breathe. A lot of people don't take proper care of hermit crabs, by the way. They've got five inches of cocoa fiber. Next on to my, um, my ghost mantis, um, Velocrania paradoxa. Sorry about this. Um, he's an L4 male. He's, he's probably one of my favorite mantids. He's got lots of personality. Yeah. He's always had a big appetite too. I really like him. He's got a nice, um, well basically most males go black or dark brown. He's got a nice golden brown recently. I like that. Um, so yes, that's my male L4 ghost mantis. Okay. Next up, I'm just going to be talking about... Um, this this is a um, an L5 orchid. Don't worry, these cups aren't um, permanent. I've got I've got fornariums for them, so don't worry. That's just an L5 orchid mantis female. I called her Snow White. I don't name all of my mantids. Um, I've got my shield mantis. This isn't a permanent home. I've got another one of these somewhere. Um, L L L4 male. Um, that's Rhombodendra, Rhombodura valida. And here I have in this big net enclosure an Idolomantis diabolica, giant devil flower praying mantis. His name's Lucifer. Now, he's one of the few I named. I just really, really like him. Every time I walk in, he comes to the side, and sometimes he waves on command. Lucifer, say hello. No. Sometimes um, I walk in and he does threat pose. He's he's now four male. I believe he may have shed to L five. I'm not too sure. He's awesome. I love him. This is now six female orchid mantis. Nothing too much. Her name's Snowbell. I name all my orchids. They're my favourite species. Here I have this quite small enclosure again. Not permanent. I have larger ones. Um, I just like to give nymphs a smaller enclosure so that it's easier for them to find food. This is a giant Australian rainforest mantis, male, um, L4. So yes, he shed once in my care. I thought he was L4 when he arrived, but he was actually L3. This is um, an L6 male, so subadult male. And that's an L8 female, by the way, so I plan to breed these two. Um, in there, we don't have anything special. We just have a... Um, a Spodromantis or I believe, um, L6, uh, no, L6 male. Here and here I have a, oh, it's doing threat pose. That's quite cool. A uh, banded flower mantis, L3. In here I decorated this enclosure. I have a, um, what's it called? Um, Spodromantis or a female. I'm going to pop her down. And next up, sorry about all the working with exotics, it's quite messy. I have a um, very classic mantis, just an, um, an L6 female, um, L6 female European mantis, mantis radio I know all the scientific names. 
Sorry if I haven't mentioned it. And my final mantis is going to grow to be, be my largest. He's a male, but this species gets huge. He's a mega mantis. Um, <laughs> let's just do a comparison real quick. This enclosure up to one of these, it's it's quite large. He has a huge enclosure. It's a reptile one. Um, basically, there he is. Um, so yeah, I do that. I unlock it. I put this on there like that, so it suctions. Just unlock it. There we go. There he is. He's um, he's quite, quite docile. Quite friendly. I got him yesterday. He's gonna grow to be about eight inches. So yeah, females can get twelve inches with this species. He's a male. Um, I guess this is kind of a good thing he's male because he can spend his whole life in here. This enclosure is 45 centimeter by 45 centimeter base, 60 centimeters tall. I have just a climbing branch. I have a side shedding surface and it's just got this nice shedding surface on top. So yeah, he's really nice. He's got a lot of personality. Random video cut off. I um, don't really know what happened. I think I... Um, accidentally unrecorded. Shoot. Um, I was gonna swear then, and I realised this is a video for YouTube, so I changed that I to two O's. Yeah, that was a bit unnecessary. Anyway, here we have my turtles. These are common musk turtles. I need to clean their shells off. That's my smallest one, Cooper. If you don't know, Cooper means, you know, um, just search it up. Cooper means something in Polish. There's George right there. Um, he was just sticking his head out. That's quite cute. Um, I just have a zoo mag basking, a um, an exoterra UVB bulb with a lamp. Um, interpet heater, interpet filter. Have a interpet um, air stone, and I have a bunch of plants. I've got the names of some of those. Um, you just have some java fern, for some reason they ate it. Um, and this is their regular basking spot that they never use, and I kind of use that for storing stuff on it. They come to the side whenever I shake the food too. There you go. Hello. Here they are. Hello, Koopa. Koopa. George. No, they're adorable. I quite like these guys. Yeah, I can't tease them and not give them food, that would just be me. Um, basically, oh, I need some more food soon. I use um, King British um, Multi. Again with the damn video cutoffs. Um, yes, here is my, <coughs> sorry. Here's my aquarium. It's a, um, I believe, um, 75 gallon. I'm not too sure. 75 gallon. Um, I just have, I need to do a water change today. I have a, um, about a 10 inch sailfin plecostomus, pleco, some neons, gold, <coughs> gold mountain minnows, some angelfish, um, I basically use, um, a nice heater, under gravel filter, and above gravel filter, um, I like to keep my tank nice and filtered. I have, um, two zebra loaches, um, a Chinese algae eater, a bristlenose plec who lives under there, and a sailfin plec. So you can imagine the waste is quite heavy, so I use a lot of filtration. So it's a standard into pet filter. I have a night light too, if you'd like to see that. There we go. It just lights up and it changes colours. And that just, it kind of, at night time, it portrays um, fish on the wall and it just helps me sleep. It's really cool, you should get one. Okay, now for something a lot of people are going to be quite creeped out about. Let's go over to my bed to show these. These are Madagascar and Hissing Cockroaches. I picked these up yesterday. They, um, they're, they're quite cool actually. There, there we go. They do that nice hiss. Basically, you might think, oh, it's a cockroach. It's horrible. It's actually not. Let me just give you people some lecture. Um, think of this. You have a rat in the wild, it carries diseases. You have a 
cockroach in the world that carries diseases. A domesticated rat make great pets that carry new diseases. Cockroaches are just like that. Well, they're not just like a rat, but if you if you know what I'm talking about. Basically, these guys I heard last night just continued hissing. And I looked in and they were breathing. It was kind of disgusting. Um, there was a male and he... I'm not going to describe it too much. Search it up. It's kind of disgusting. Yeah, they just make a nice hiss. Um, they ate all their grapes last night. I feed them grapes, leek, tomato, carrot... Yeah, no, not carrot. Um, parsnip. Um, have a nice day. This has been Mantis Dude 101. Um, goodbye.